Hi friends, welcome back to Amy Bakes. I'm Amy and today we are going to be moving our thoughts towards the upcoming holiday and we are going to make something that every Thanksgiving dessert table should have. We're going to be making an apple cake today. This recipe comes from my neighbor. She gave it to me. So let's go over our list of ingredients and supplies. For our apple cake recipe, we're going to need a cup of granulated sugar, a cup of light brown sugar, one cup of butter softened, three eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla, two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth of teaspoon of nutmeg, two and a half cups of flour, four cups of chopped apples, which is gonna be about four apples, and one cup of chopped pecans. For our supplies, we're gonna need a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. You're going to need a Bundt cake pan, and we're going to uh, prepare that with Baker's Joy instead of grease and flouring the pan, because it's easier. You're going to need a cutting board and knives for your, uh, so you cut your apples and your pecans. You will need a measuring cup for your apples. You will need some measuring cup for your flowers and sugars. I've got a one cup and a one half cup. Measuring spoons for your spices. I've got a one teaspoon and a one eighth a teaspoon and a wire rack to cool your cake on. So the first step is we are going to uh, preheat our oven to 325 and I've got that done. And now I'm going to spray my pan. And remember, you can grease and flour. This is just Baker's Joy makes it a whole lot easier with a bun pan. Okay, now we're going to get that uh, set aside. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cream together our softened butter and our two different sugars. We're going to do a granulated sugar and a light brown sugar. So put that in there. Now this recipe does not say packed brown sugar. A lot of times in recipes it will say packed, and if it does, be sure to follow that. But this one does not, so I'm not going to tightly pack this in there. This is going to be just kind of loosely measured. Okay, and you can get brown sugar in light or dark. If your recipe specifically calls for one or the other, use it. But as a general rule, if you want your cookies to be more flavorful, you could use a dark brown sugar. So I'm just going to kind of level that off without packing it in. So it's not like a normal packed brown sugar. So see how that just kind of explodes out? If that were packed tightly, then when that flopped out, it would have kept its shape. Now we're just going to cream these together. Now we are going to prepare our apples. Uh, you need four cups of chopped apples. It says unpeeled, but everybody kind of prefers this one with peeled apples, so I'm going to go ahead and peel them. You don't have to, though, if you don't want to. Um, and like I said, it's going to take about four cups, which is going to be about four apples, depending on their size. For baking, Granny Smith is the best one for baking. You just cannot go wrong with a Granny Smith apple. So we're going to get these peeled and then chopped. And let me tell you a little bit about this particular recipe. This one is great, and I really believe it's a must for every Thanksgiving dessert table because there are some people that do not like pumpkin. So they don't really prefer the pumpkin pies or the pumpkin cakes and all of the the pumpkin desserts that we have at Thanksgiving time. So this one is a great um, recipe for those people that don't like the pumpkin or, or that really just like apples, or if you just want an additional dessert that's a little different from your traditional pumpkin and pecan pie recipes, this one's a great one for that. My neighbor actually made this one for me um, when my mother-in-law passed away a few years ago. And my husband took one bite of this recipe and he is like, you have got to get that recipe from her. And now it is his most requested cake. So you don't want to chop these little apple bits up too fine. About that size is good. They're going to cook down a little bit, of course. So you don't want them too finely chopped. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and just keep doing the rest of these apples until I have about four cups worth. Okay, we have got our sugars and our butter creamed together, and I've got my apples prepared, and I've just set those aside. The next step is we are going to add the eggs and the vanilla. So, let me go ahead and get that. How much vanilla do we need here? Teaspoonish. Okay. One little more splash. There we go. Got our vanilla, and now we need three eggs. And I'm happy to report that we got the snake out of the chicken coop. My girls freaked out for about a week and stopped laying eggs. And um, after that, we got the snake out. And now they are laying again. So I'm super happy that we have farm fresh eggs again for us instead of the reptiles. So we're going to need three of these eggs. And then we're going to cream this together as well. Our next step is going to add the dry ingredients. So we are going to need two and a half cups of flour. And we are just using all purpose flour. We're going to spoon and level. And remember, we do that because if you just scoop it down in there and level it off, you're going to pack the flour in and you're going to end up with too much. So we're going to need two and a half cups of flour. That's one. And two coming up. Okay, we got our two and a half cups of flour. I'm going to need two teaspoons of baking soda. All right, and we're going to need one teaspoon of cinnamon. and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. You want to be careful with nutmeg. You can really overpower a recipe with that, and too much nutmeg is actually toxic. Now we're going to mix this all together, and then we're going to add our apples and our pecans. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides to make sure we get all the flour in there and get it good and mixed in. So I'm going to scrape down the sides and just turn that back on. Get it mixed in. And you can see this is a very thick batter. It's fixing to get a whole lot thicker. All right, now we're going to, we're going to add the apples and a cup of chopped nuts, chopped pecans. Now we're just going to mix that in again, and then we're going to put it in the pan. Just very low. All right, let's clean the beaters off, and then we're going to put that in the pan. You can see that is a very, very thick, thick cake batter. Okay, we're just going to spoon this in there because this is not pouring. There you go. So get it in there as evenly as you can into your prepared pan. And you can see how incredibly thick that is. But I promise you, this is going to be delicious. Like I said, this cake is really great for the people that don't like your traditional Thanksgiving pumpkin recipes. It's great any time of the fall, actually. Um, anytime apples are in season. Y'all are going to have to forgive my cat in the background. She is screaming her head off. I had to lock her up so that she would not be in here and be underfoot while I was baking. And she is very upset. And she is voicing 
her disapproval with my decision. All right. Now we are going to kind of just mush this in and get this as even as possible. Okay, and then we are going to bake this in our preheated oven for 65 minutes. So get this as even as you can. I think that looks pretty good. A little low over here. Perfect. There we go. Uh, We're going to pop that in there. That's weird. I don't know if y'all saw that on camera. We just had a, like a flicker of the lights. Okay, we're going to put that in there for 65 minutes. That's an hour and five minutes. And then we'll check on it. Okay, let's, we're going to test that. Beautiful. Toothpick comes out clean. We're going to set that up here and we are going to let that cool in the pan for 10 minutes. Okay, we are going to flip this out. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it right out onto this wooden serving board. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. One, two, three. Oh. And hopefully nothing stuck. Oh, look at that cake. Oh, I wish you guys could smell how absolutely wonderful my house smells right now. Here it is. So this is kind of like a spice cake, but with the addition of the apples and things like that. And what my husband loves about it is it gets almost a little crunchy layer on it. Just kind of a little right through here, and he loves that. You could let that cool completely, and you could sprinkle that with powdered sugar, or you could put some caramel glaze on there, or just serve it the way it is. It's absolutely perfect the way it is. So we're just gonna let this cool, and when it is cool, we will put the, the little dome back on it, but for right now, we're just gonna let it cool and leave it be. Thank you guys so much for joining me today in this incredible, delicious, fall recipe and Thanksgiving must have. It is absolutely delicious. I really, really hope you guys give it a try. Um, I'd also like to, if you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'm kind of getting into the holiday spirits. We're going to have some great recipes coming up.